The band has been booked, the cake has been made, the photographers chosen, all bills have been paid. The guests are decided, the menu too. Something borrowed, check, ditto, old and blue. The stationery has been ordered, along with the flowers. Favours are done after fiddling for hours. The stag do's a blur, same goes for the hen. Won't be drinking that much in one sitting again. The dress has been picked, accessories bought. There's nothing to schedule, no more to sort. After endless to-do lists for over a year, it's time to relax. The big day is here. Sitting here with my girls as our hair gets done. I can't help feeling lucky to have found the one. Just think, by lunchtime, I'll be his new wife. Roll on the wedding, our new married life. I can, I can count the amount of tasks I had for today on this hand. Most of them I failed at or never attempted. So the only task I went ahead with is this speech, which I'll finish writing this morning. It only dawned on me today when writing this speech that the first time we ever met, and I might get the, this number wrong, um, was seven years ago today at the Blues. I was talking to my auntie outside the venue where with Nicola was working on the outside bar. I immediately walked up and told her I wanted to marry her. I'd never seen anybody so scared and she ran inside to safety. It was maybe six months later when I saw her again and uttered those same words in the same drunken tone and she was still surprisingly unimpressed. Every Wednesday, a few, few friends and I would go to the Weatherspoons in Cone for a curry and a few beers, then into the venue just so I could see Nicola. It took many weeks of trying to win her round, and finally I plucked up the courage with a Harry Boring this time, asked her to marry me, and she accepted. I always remember how shocked uh, my friend Danny was because he couldn't believe how anybody could love Harry Bo that much. Weeks and weeks to prepare, running here and there, arranging the day, your vows to say, hoping your day will be bliss, preparing the guest list none amiss. Flowers, rings, the wedding cake, present list for you to make. Wedding cars, ribbons to tie, emotions running high. Finally, the day is here, time is drawing near. Meet your man, make your vow, your happiness is starting now. Two people join together as one, time together when guests have gone. Nicola, I promise to love you forever, to be open, honest and faithful to you, to support your dreams and to respect your thoughts and feelings. I promise to stand with you as we share this life and cherish the memories we make together. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and affection. And in recognition of our shared life together, I choose you to be my husband, this day and every day. Now, before I met Joe, Nicola told me that he was very quiet and quite shy. So, the first time I met him was at a family birthday meal at the Masala Rooms. And the whole tribe were there. And believe me when I say, they're not the quietest people in the world, are you? The poor guy must have wondered what the hell he was letting himself in for. Fortunately, it obviously didn't put him off completely. And even though I didn't get much chance to talk to him that night, I liked him straight away. And as time's gone by, and I've got to know him better, I can see why they make such a good couple. They share the same values. An ethos of hard work, an appreciation of the good things in life, and a determination to get things done. And I'd like to take this opportunity, Joe, to say I'm proud to call you my son-in-law and welcome to our family. Yes, and how many 
So my first memory of Joe was a cheeky chappy shouting out of the school bus window at me while I was on my paper round on his way to Oak Hill. From then, I should have known he was going to be trouble. This is another night where we're all, all the lads were trying to get ready to go out and we're off, we're all planning a big night in Skipton and uh, for some reason we decided that we're all going to shave each other's heads. So out of the ten people that were up there, eight of us had a skinhead and um, when the novelty died off for the shaved head, Joel started giving each other tram lines and he started giving them in the eyebrows and in the sides and then we all went on to get changed and we left Joel to it with the shears in his hand. And then we all met up down at Cotton Tree a couple of hours later and we're all suited and booted ready to go to Skipton. And Joel turns up with his shoes on, his pants, his shirt and a woolly hat. Didn't take long before someone whipped it off and realised that he'd shaved his own eyebrows off because his tram lines didn't go to plan and as he carried on trying to correct it, he realised that he'd shaved one off, looked in the mirror and realised he didn't balance with one eyebrow so he had to shave his other one off. Nico is lucky that Joe has remembered to turn up today because half the time he doesn't know what day it is. An example of this was on a four-day stag do when we, we went on a few years ago to Benidorm. After the first night, we all came down to the pool the next morning to find Joe in the hotel reception, fully changed, drinking a cup of tea with his bag packed, ready to go home. This wasn't because he was missing Nicola or he'd had enough drinking. It's because he seriously thought it was Sunday morning and we'd been there for four days. We have had the best times together. Ups and downs, like anyone else does, but also shared some great experiences together that I will never forget, especially the birth of our daughter, Ruby. Since she came into our lives, it's changed my perspective on life and nothing really matters apart from family and friends and being happy. You and Ruby really make me happy. And I look forward to sharing many more great memories that we are yet to create. I can't point to words how happy I am to finally call Nicola my wife. It was a year and a half ago when I rang Malcolm and after a 30 minute phone call he reluctantly agreed to let me marry his daughter. I think it's fair to say ladies and gentlemen that Nicola looks absolutely fabulous. Nicola, we were brother, in, brother and sister-in-law before today, but I'd like to think that your marriage to one of my best friends has brought us closer together, and I am all the happier for it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you all to join me in wishing Joe and Nicola a long life together filled with happiness, adventure, and lots of wonderful memories. And raise a glass to the bride and groom, Nicola and Joe. One and a half, I don't know where the other half is. 
So Joel's wanting to go and find the people and going absolutely crazy. And all I'm thinking of is Sheila's face the next morning or when she finds out. And I've felt the wrath of Sheila for the next couple of weeks. Um, so, yes, we still don't fully know what happened that night, but that is one that stays in my memory and one that always will. But if you look at him now, you'd never even notice that left ear of Joe's is, you know. <laughs>